What's up guys, this is Jonathan from Keep It Retro, just like to welcome everybody to my first Let's Play. Gonna play a little bit of Resident Evil 2 Remake. So, the goal of this Let's Play for me is to try and get enough commentary in there to help you guys, but also I'm not gonna like talk the whole time you know I know you kind of got to strike that balance so I'm just gonna come in when I need to and give you guys some tips and some things I thought helped me when I played through this game the first time so anyways let's uh, let's enjoy getting good. I need some sleep. Oh, shit! You know, I will say, um, right before we get into the game, that I'm really, really happy with the way they took this game, you know, the direction, and I feel like, you know, they took it and turned it on its head. It was really excellent the first time I played through, and it's still a favorite of mine. Kind of made it feel like it was the first time playing this game for, you know, kind of like when I was a kid when I bought it, and now as uh, an adult coming back to it, it was really pleasant to kind of relive all that stuff in a different way. All right. So here we're getting into the good part. <clears throat> so I've been reading around and I've seen that quite a few people are having trouble with like uh, the tyrant, uh, maybe some puzzles, things like that. So I'm going to show you my way of doing it. And I'm able to blow through and get at least, I don't know, I'd say down to the sewer level by, I don't know, maybe two and a half hours in, maybe. So, I feel like I'm doing pretty good for myself. All right, so the first thing that I do want to say Hello? is that um, getting into this, you really have to kind of be open-minded, especially if you're a veteran of the series and you're coming over to something like this. Um, Something's not right. You're going to think on your toes. Let's just put it that way. And the better you're, you are doing that, the more success you're going to have and the better you're going to play this game. So I'd really recommend, you know, getting your tactics right planning ahead if you've already come through the game once and you know try not to backtrack too much if you don't have to what are you doing stop moving also you need help stay back sir i got this Also, I'd like to say it's cool that they brought the zombies back, because honestly, I would have been pissed if they would have tried to pawn us off with something like they did in Resident Evil 6 or Resident Evil 5. You know, parasites are only cool for so damn long. Also, yes, in this game, one of the priorities you're going to have is definitely try to aim for the head. 
I mean, of course, right? Zombies. But the reason why is because body shots will slow them down, but in no way will it kill them. So if you really want to do some damage, always aim for the head and always try to connect. Because uh, ammo is a little sparse, and if you're not, you know, thinking about it, I guess, then you do run the chance of running out, and it will screw you later on. So just be aware of those things. On. I don't know. Hopefully they'll have some answers at the police station. Wait, you're a cop? Yeah, Leon Kennedy. You are? Claire. Claire Redfield. Live around here? No. I'm looking for my brother. He's a cop too. Well, it's a good thing we found each other. I don't know what to expect anymore. And, um... I guess I should already say, because I know some people are interested, but I'm playing the PlayStation 4 version. You won't really find any difference between that version and any other version. They're all going to be the same. They're all going to play the same. Attention all citizens, due to the citywide outbreak, you are advised to take shelter at the Raccoon City Police Station. Free food and medical... All right, we're back. Okay, guys, so as soon as this actually gets done with, I'll start in with more commentary, but I'm just going to kind of drop it right now um, and just kind of let you guys enjoy. What if we're the only ones? What if there's no survivors? No, there's survivors big city. There has to be. Looks like we're walking from here. Whoa! 
can't stay here. It's not safe. Go on ahead. All right, guys. So jumping into the game, honestly, right off the bat, you just want to avoid every single zombie in your path. There's really no reason whatsoever to fight them. Um, all I can really say is not every fight you're going to want to get into. I mean, sometimes it's just best to run, but you also have to think about the fact that some zombies will be a headache later on if you do have to backtrack, especially when the tyrant comes into play because he kind of comes at random, and when he does, it, it can ruin your day, especially if you're staring down two or three zombies in a hallway and you got to get around those. So just think about that, and I'll show you my tactics that I use, and hopefully that'll help you. See? Clean pass all the way into the station. No no need to shoot anything. Uh, no need to run into anything. I mean, they're easy to get around. One of the things I'll say is that you want to try and collect everything that you can. You know, whether that be health, um, ammo, gunpowder, etc. You've always got an infinite amount of space in your storage box. So make sure you stock up on all supplies because you really never know when you might need them. There has to be someone here. Find that guy. Okay, and another thing I do want to apologize for in advance is I might have some spoilers for you um, if you haven't played through the game, but you know, it's, it's bound to happen these days. You know, in the YouTube age, uh, you can pretty much see all this stuff before you ever get a chance to touch it with your own hands. So, um, you know, the goal is just to, to help you play on a better level. And if you're speed running or trying to beat the game uh, with a better time to get a better rank, uh, th these tips should really help you out. So as you can see, what I'm doing right now is definitely going through and, and collecting everything on the base floor. I mean, don't leave no stone unturned. I mean, you can always come back and unlock um, safes later, and you can always get the, you know, uh, little medallions uh, that you need for the puzzle later. But try to get all the ammo and every healing item that you can find. And a good rule of thumb is that leave yourself at least one or two spaces in your inventory. Um, you never know what you'll run across, whether it's something that's a self-defense item, more ammunition, or maybe a key right when you need it, but you also need what else is in your inventory. It kind of keeps you from having that headache of having to backtrack and, you know, leaving you open to be attacked by the tyrant or running back into a zombie you had to run away from. And yeah, I already know combinations and things like that from other playthroughs, so if you want to pause that or just look over that part, you're welcome to. Now watch how I manage my items in my inventory. I mean, of course I already know what's coming, but it's a good way to prepare yourself and to get an idea of what kind of way you want to manage it and the style you want to adopt to keep you able to uh, keep items that you need when you need them, but not have them be a nuisance later on, you know, because you might have to throw them away or something when you really don't want to. 
And in this hallway especially, there are a few things. I mean, of course, you won't be able to access uh, the closed door here right away, but you will be able to find some other items lurking around in the dark. And it, it, I, I think it actually kind of helps, because um, the more ammo, the merrier, right? So just stock up if you can, because um, it's not too long before the shit hits the fan, really. They did a great job building it up and kind of making the tension, you know, sit there well until they finally just slap you in the face. But um, I just like to be prepared. Years of playing these kinds of games like this and back on the PlayStation 1 have taught me that item management and being smart about what you do really makes a big difference. Now this little book that you're about to pick up from this guy is something that you really want to reference from because it's going to have, at least on the standard and easier modes in the first playthrough, it's going to have everything you need to get those medallions and solve the puzzles. So don't just pick it up and leave it because you'll find yourself needing answers from that book later on. Matter of fact, in this uh, playthrough that I'm doing, I kind of skipped through a few steps. I'm not playing it in its vanilla state, if you will. Um, I'm jumping through a few things to try and lead up to um, getting to points in the game that you have to be prepared for. So I'm just not wasting any time in between. And um, you guys will kind of see as you watch the, the series I'm putting together on this that I have a method to the madness, definitely. Also, uh, just something I find nice is that Capcom used the in-game engine for all the cutscenes. That's great. Because I don't know if you guys remember, but um, playing the old school Resident Evil 2, you had the, I think they called them FMVs um, back in the 90s. They were all compressed, and honestly, they looked good for the time, but coming over to modern televisions and things like that, when you push those images through in high definition, they just tend to look terrible. Pre-render graphics were kind of cool back in the day, but I'm really glad to see that we have the um, capabilities now to render in full 3D. It just makes the experience so much better. I'm all for retro, but I do love to see how technology has advanced. Yeah, well, I was supposed to start last week, and I got a call to stay away. I wish I'd come here sooner. You're here now, Leon. That's all that matters. Okay, hey, Lieutenant, I'm ready. Hopefully you'll be able to find a way out of this station. That officer you met earlier, Elliot, he thought this secret passageway might do the trick. Mm. This is good news. We can get you to a hospital. No, no, I am not the priority here. Lieutenant, I'm not just gonna leave you here. I'm giving you an order, rookie. You save yourself first. I'd come with you, but I just slow you down. Now, you'll need this. I can't take it. Stop. Him. And don't make my mistake. If you see one of those things, uniform... You know, it's kind of sad to see what happened to Marvin, but I'm still glad they gave him more of a backstory this time around because the poor guy got pretty much taken out right around the time you meet him. Um... <laughs> I really wish that the rumor were true and that they would kind of give him a DLC so you could see what led up to him doing that and what happened to him. I just think it would be really neat. You know, if Capcom were to go through with it, I would definitely pay for it. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I've always felt like Marvin, he deserved more of a backstory. 
He's a great supporting character anyways. That was my thought. So, as you can see, I'm jumping ahead. You know, that little book has everything that you need to unlock these. I just figure get them now, because if you have the first two in, and then, you know, all you have to do is grab the third, hey, what's, what's the big deal? And you will, through this strip right here of part one, uh, be able to grab the first two. So, I just figure, you know, kill two birds with one stone before I run into any other issues or maybe the tyrant comes along. Because you do have to be careful because there is a jump off point, if you will, for the tyrant. And once you hit that point, depending on the version you're going through, whether it's the first run or the second, uh, you have to be ready. Because he will just come out of nowhere and honestly scare the shit out of you. So as you can see, I know I, for the sake of the, uh, the the playthrough, I'm doing assisted, just so I don't have to worry about lining up all my shots perfectly and it taking such, you know, much more an amount of time than it should. Um, so just be aware that the boards right there come in very handy. If you take those and board up the windows, especially in the spots that I'm going to tell you, it'll help you be prepared for later on in the game when he does come through and uh, the tyrant's chasing you when you need a key. You can avoid him or at least avoid the trouble with the zombies. Fucking weak. Look at this guy. Ugh. Some nasty shit. And of course, I got the motherfucker up on the hook. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So, coming around the corner, you see that one's open, boarded up, you know, but when you have the boards. Like, honestly, what I'd recommend is boarding this one up right here. But then again, that's when you come back through. Right now, the main focus is to just get through this section. Because, I mean, it, right now, they don't pose a threat. They're going to be in the hallway, but at the same time, uh, you're not going to come through there enough right now for it to matter. But either way, if you want to slap a board down, slap a board down. I don't care. Me, I just waited until I had enough to uh, to do it because there are a few parts where you might want to use it uh, later. You might want to use it sooner. It just depends on what you want to accomplish. And yes, the knife is useful. That's an old school Resident Evil trick, by the way, where you can conserve ammo by using your knife. So your goal is to knock the zombie down, run up to him with a knife, and knife the shit out of them until they die. It is possible. I don't know about on the hard modes, but at least on standard and the assisted, it's very doable. And I will say by doing that, I save quite a bit of ammo. I mean, it's not a bad route to go, but they... They're better used, really, as a backup weapon for when you get grabbed. So again, if you do need to go through any of the puzzle sections, feel free to pause them. Because um, I do have these solutions to everything in this walkthrough. Okay, and there is a zombie over there um, on the desk laying over. If you just leave him alone, he won't actually bother you. But if you bump into him or shoot him, he will get up. So if you just leave him alone, leave him alone. Because he's kind of a bullet sponge and it's really not worth wasting the ammo. Because it don't matter if you're coming through there multiple times or if the tyrant's chasing you. He never gets up. Just don't mess with him.
honestly for authenticity like i don't really like using the upgrades on the weapons but for the sake of showing you all the advantages you can have i'm gonna use them this playthrough and you'll see that they do make your life easier but you know sometimes if you just want to challenge try going through without ever doing that and it's kind of more like an old school feeling i guess i mean however it's each their own So again, stock up. Um, you won't have all the keys yet, but that's not important. There are some that you can open, and they do have a couple useful things, so definitely get in there and get them. And for some reason, this guy tends to get up. Like, even if you think he's dead, you can go into another room and he'll get up for some reason. I think it's because he's supposed to, um, but I just always kill him ahead of time. Definitely board up that window. If you can, get it before the zombie comes through, because, you know, fuck that guy. Um, for anybody who's a completionist, by all means, if you want to get the photos, get the photos. I did my first playthrough, but I just don't see a, f a reason really now because I've got kind of my own way of doing things and I'm just here to show you guys what works, what won't work, and I'm not here to do a completionist run. So you're going to see this officer laying down here, uh, she has some ammo on her, grab it. And you'll have that guy coming down the stairs, always be on the lookout for him. I didn't see him the first time, he snuck up on me. But see, it works. There's a telltale noise when they die in this game. I can't really kind of describe it, but you'll know it when you hear it. When you hear that noise, um, kind of like a... I don't know, it's like they ooze into a pole or something is what it sounds like, but yeah, um, just pay attention to the to the audio in this game. You know, there's a lot of audio cues and little uh, binaural sounds and what have you that they threw in here for, you know, your listening pleasure. So just pay attention. Play with headphones, honestly, is what I'd recommend. And yeah, I do backtrack just a little bit sometimes, because uh, if I know for a fact I don't need an item, I will put it back. If it takes, you know, two minutes of my time to go back and put it back and save me a long trek, I'd rather do that. Now this one, I'm not really sure why I did it, because I could have hit the box uh, coming out the other side, but, you know, whatever. Definitely hold on to the 50 cal, because boy, that thing comes in handy when you hit the sewers. Also comes in handy with boss fights, but you know, it's one of those weapons you use very sparingly. Okay, for any of you guys that maybe don't know, like it's your first playthrough, this is where you're going to find the last medallion, um, but you will need to find the detonator and the battery first. Okay, so now that we're in the library, uh, I just want to make it clear, there's going to be one zombie you're going to see coming down these stairs, and you need to get rid of her, and there's a bigger guy in the corner over by the door, you want to get rid of him too. 
he'll, I think he'll stand up anyways. I don't think it really matters. So, um, either way, you gotta get rid of him. But get rid of the three zombies in here. The rest, they don't get up. But it will save you a headache. Trust me there. I love when that actually happens. I don't know how to make it happen more often, but when it does, it's cool. So yeah, you don't have to worry about that guy either. He's not gonna get up. But that dude there, yeah. Don't let that asshole walk away. So another thing is I didn't do this before and the tyrant kind of fucked me. He chased me around while I was trying to do it the first time. So you want to line up all of these bookcases because if you do, then the only thing you have to do is drop the jack and move one into place and you're good to go. One or two, give or take. But anyways, the reason why I moved that one is if you go back behind here, there's actually, yep, see, ammo. Isn't that lovely? Gotta love it. All right, so this is like the first little initial leg of the Let's Play. Um, you know, I really do hope you guys have been enjoying it so far because I've had a lot of fun playing this game. I love it. Um, you know, I just want to bring it to the to the forefront of my uh, my fans' attention here on Keep It Retro because this this series here really inspired me to be a gamer and to still be playing it is really really cool. I don't know. Just kind of feels like I grew up with it, I guess. Bam. There you go. Got your unicorn key. You have the lion. So really all you need is the very last one. See? You got all of them out of the way. You don't have to worry about hunting them down. she'd make it oh, you know her yeah name's Claire I came into town with her you can get to that courtyard through the second floor east side all right guys this is the end of the first part one on video it. of the let's play I hope you guys have been enjoying it so far um do check back because I will be posting a part two coming soon um and I am going to take it through the whole game so if you want to follow along with me you are very welcome to um don't forget to like subscribe drop me a comment let me know how you feel about the video so far and uh if you have any suggestions let me know in the comments but anyways guys thank you for watching and I will see you next time thank you
Okay, and another thing I do want to apologize for in advance is I might have some spoilers for you um, if you haven't played through the game, but, you know, it's, it's bound to happen these days. You know, in the YouTube age, uh, you can pretty much see all this stuff before you ever get a chance to touch it with your own hands. So, um, you know, the goal is just to, to help you play on a better level. And if you're speed running or trying to beat the game uh, with a better time to get a better rank, uh, th these tips show in high definition, they just tend to look terrible.